He's known from Japan to Hickabo, Texas, down there. If you hunt and fish in Texas, you run across Ray Murski. And if you shoot Remington shotguns, you run across him probably quicker. And you strike King Bates, you run, probably run across him quicker than most people. But he's just a fixture in the industry. I mean, he is the industry. Ray Murski would give you the shirt off his back. Now, it wouldn't fit, but he'd give it to you anyway. Ray Mursky began his fishing career as a young man catching freshwater drum to sell in his father's grocery store in Brenham, Texas. Back that day and time, it was, they were gas for goods. And we'd go to the Brazos River every Sunday at the church and just literally fill two or three igloo ice chests full of fish. And I mean, it was just a way of life. Of course, he's Catholic, and then the fish they didn't sell, they would eat on Friday and he wound up hating fish as a result of that. And he, he was in college apparently when the Pope said that the Catholics didn't have to eat fish on Friday anymore and it was the happiest day of his life. But he still loved to fish. And after finishing college with a business degree and serving three years in the Army, the open waters of Texas awaited him. I can remember my dad bringing home a Hawaiian wiggler. I said, Dad, you can't catch fish with an artificial bait. We caught maybe 20 bass between three and five pounds, and I couldn't believe it. Anyway, that's what really got me started to think about bass fishing. That thought carried Ray through 40 BASS tournaments, starting with the first one on Arkansas's Beaver Lake in 1967. The four of us, Dance, Blake, and, and John, and myself, we finished one, two, three, four in this tournament. And that was Ray Scott giving us the awards. Ray fished professionally for five years, and in 1972 was listed ninth on the BASS all-time money-winning list. At the same time, he was getting his foot in the door selling lures. I owned an outdoor newspaper, but where I, what I learned a lot about the sporting goods business is when I was selling newspaper ads. But you really didn't have to know a lot about lures at that time because if it would catch fish, you could sell it to anybody. A businessman first, Ray learned to use the media to push his product. Maybe he wants to tell me something I wrote that he likes. Maybe he wants to tell me something I wrote that he didn't like. Uh, maybe he wants to tell me about a product, but I know the energy level is fixing to go up when I hear hey back on the other end of the line. In 1984, Ray became the owner of the Bliss Mursky Rep Group out of Dallas, and today has 100 salespeople representing major hunting and fishing tackle companies in 30 states and territories. But in 1995, another door opened to Ray, the Strike King Lure Company. <laughs> He's like, he like, okay, where are we? He says, I know, I don't know. I said, man, he wants a lot of money for this thing. Dad, do it, we can do something with it. And we, we did, we, we took the company and it was doing 10 or $11 million in sales and today we're substantially above that. With two successful companies under his belt, Ray wanted to give something back to the fishing industry. Today, he sits on no less than 16 advisory boards, foundations, and organizations, all dedicated to conservation. But it's the kids who tug at his heart. I started hearing the companies that we represent and the customers that we sell to telling me that they're, they're, the average age of their customer was getting older. And I started asking them, I said, what are you doing about it? Ray opened up his 1,800-acre ranch to youth groups, giving kids a chance to catch their first fish or take their first deer. He sponsored countless youth outings, and it's reported that more than 50,000 kids have had an outdoor experience because of him. He could have took all that money and everything else he made and put it in his pocket and went off somewhere else. But when he's spending that money to to help somebody else learn to fish and, and get the handicapped and the underprivileged kids out fishing. And, and that's uh, one of the things I respect him for more than anything else. You know, everybody's got 24 hours. I don't care how much money you've got. And Ray gives a whole lot of his 24 hours to hunting and fishing and kids in Texas. He fishes and he hunts. He's, he's very avid. And he wants everyone to have that opportunity. And, and he's willing to put up to see that it happens. No, Always God, competitive, Ray has fished BASS tournaments for 40 out of his 65 years. He's won just about every division, from individual to father-daughter, and just recently, he and his son Mike 
won the Texas two-man team championship. He and I never did win the father-son division, and this is what I'm really proud of. We caught 46 pounds of fish, all on striking jigs and striking lizards. One thing's for sure, it's always going to be a day of laughs with him. He, uh, he, he gives a, a lot of comic relief, especially when things aren't going so well. What I really wanted to be was a manufacturer's rep selling women's lingerie. <laughs> And how I ended up with fishing tackle, I'll never know. But, uh. but there's one more category Ray wants to win. Yep, yep, I got to I gotta win one with uh, my husband and wife division. I got to go and fish for that one. In April 2005, Ray Mursky married Amanda Smith and promptly took her fishing. Ray was named one of the 25 bass fishing icons from Bassmaster Magazine. And he never lets me forget it. <laughs> I'm always fishing with an icon. I feel like I can do this for another 20, 30 years. <laughs>